But we welcome you here today, whether you're here in person or whether you are joining us online. We also welcome Wid Hesselbark and his wife as our Gideon speaker today. They're from Woodville, Ohio, so you may have heard of them before. Wid said he's been called by many names and he answers to them all, so whatever you call him is fine today. So I'm sure he'll have a great message for us today about the Gideons. And it was just this past week that we enjoyed a wonderful Gideon banquet. The food, the music, the speakers, and the testimonies are great. We never have gone to a bad Gideon banquet. They're just always wonderful, and the Gideons certainly thank their pastors and their guests with royalty, I would say. <coughs> Great treatment. It was a busy week this past week, kind of unusual in some ways as we started out with Pat Banke's funeral on Monday. We volunteered at LifeWise this week. We had a Gideon banquet. We had a wedding at the end of the week, and then we had the passing of Butch Tyson, and also my cousin passed away. So lots of things happened this week. You know, those, those always happen. There's death and there's life. It, uh, it keeps continuing. So you've received your flyers for the fall party, so this is to remind you to share these with someone, invite someone. Remember to bring a snack item that's easily picked up for that night. A uh, good time to invite neighbors, grandkids, friends. We invite anybody we can find. You know, there's gonna be a Mexican food truck there that night for hopefully people from the town will want to come and, and purchase some food. Uh, I'm going to share an update on Lakota's LifeWise progress. Some of you live in the Lakota district and this is what's going on there. Um, James Dieter is the leader of the Lakota LifeWise, and they have a board of Tammy Dean, Heidi Miller, Diane Rumschlag, Jeff Adams, and Sharice Reisner. Together, we'll be finalizing the lo location, transportation, teachers, and volunteers for our first year. We will not begin classes until January 6, 2025, giving us time to carefully pray and plan what God has put on your heart. We are presently working with the administration to hold classes off campus during the lunch and recess hour with grades first through fourth, each off campus on a separate day, usually Monday through Thursday. If you are feeling that God is causing you, calling you to volunteer one of these days, we would be glad to share the possibilities. And we have many prayer concerns that you can pray about. We have determined that the location for our first year will be Rising Sun Church of God on Highway 23, Rising Sun, Ohio. Our biggest need right now is acquiring vehicles, whether they be a 15-passenger van or 84-passenger school bus. We need Christian drivers with a CDL that will safely transport our most valuable part of LifeWise, the students. If you are interested in praying for Lakota LifeWise, I put prayer sheets on the information table. Um, James Dieter has laid out a day-by-day -day, uh, prayer request, and the, that's just really nice. You know specifically what to pray about. So if prayer is one of your gifts, you need to pick up one of those off the information table. So I think that takes care of our announcements for today, and the children might, may line up at the back door, and a teacher will take you to Kids Church. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take up our regular morning offering, and after the, after Wid speaks, why we'll take up the offering for the Gideons. Right now, it's our regular offering, so if the ushers will come forward, we'll take up our morning offering. Um, we one prayer request is pray that um, our building uh, plans get approved. Um, they've been up at the building inspection for about three weeks, I think. They said it could take three to four weeks, so just uh, pray that those plans get approved and. If you notice, we started using our thermometer back there to show how we're doing on uh, our next uh, amount of the project that we need to start thinking about in the future, the funds. Um, pray for Judy, Judy Tice and her family. Um, Butch passed away this week. She's going to be giving us uh, final uh, dates for a memorial service. We're going to do something in the near future, so I'm um, just going to keep her in prayer and the family. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity we have together to hear your word. We pray that you would continue to be with uh, the plans for the church, Lord, that you would uh, help them to get approved and uh, just continue to watch over that project. Lord, we pray for Judy and her family. Lord, just continue to comfort them and, and just be with them and bless them and, and just uh, guide them through this time. Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your love and your mercy towards us. Lord, we just ask you to bless this offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're glad to have Wid Hasselbart with us this morning. Wid's from I, I, uh, Woodville? Okay. You know, I knew, your, I knew his dad. I hardly got to talk to you this morning. But um, anyway, I was on a board with his dad at one time, so... Um, just glad to have him here to share about the Gideon message, and uh, he's going to come up and do that now. And I don't know if anybody else knows it, but uh, Rex Neitz is a Gideon. Rex, Rex is a, neat, a Gideon, and uh, Rex always is uh, an encouragement. He, Rex, he, Rex is the one that got me into the Gideons, so that was a long, long time ago. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Pastor Ron. It's good to be here this morning. Um, wanted to share with you some things this morning why it is so important that we as Gideons uh, the gentleman over there uh, and Ron too why it's so important we hand out these little Bibles and the lives they change I may not even need this I got a big enough mouth where can everybody hear me hold it up to my mouth okay and the uh, the first example uh, I have this morning, a um, few short years ago, there was a church couple visiting, an elderly <laughs> couple, and uh, the gentleman visiting noticed a uh, picture of a serviceman on the couple's tab coffee table, and he asked if that might be their son, and the man quietly got up, didn't say anything, went, went to the back of the house, came out with a little camouflage worn Gideon Testament, and um, he said that uh, their son went into the service at a young age and worried about his salvation, which they were pretty sure he did not have, and uh, it, some time went by, he was killed in action, and uh, he pulled out this, this Bible, and in it was a note that said from his, uh, along with his, all his personal belongings, that uh, there was a note from his immediate commander, and his commander said that they, when they found his body, where, the, uh, where they found his body, there was a note, <sighs> I'm get, I get so excited about sharing this stuff, you know? So I'm gonna go to my notes. The note said, we found the body of your son in a fighting position. This Gideon Testament was clutched in his hand and his fingers were inserted in two places. John 3.16 and in the back cover where the plan of salvation is in these Bibles that we offer. Your son signed it two days before the bullet found its mark and took his life. The father gently closed the note placed it back in the testament, and he told the visiting couple they wouldn't take a million dollars for that Bible. And he said that when the, nights, when the days are long and the nights are lonely, we take it out and we read and have the promise from the God who cannot lie, we will see our son again someday. Um, all of you know what we do as Gideons. We hand out Bibles at the county fairs. Um, uh, Tara Owens, the, the guys in Toledo do, <clears throat> excuse me, do that. Uh, we hand them out at schools. Uh, we are not allowed on uh, pri uh, school property. We have to stay on the sidewalks. Third world countries, the Gideons can go right into the schools. And we, I think what we're well known for is putting Bibles in the hotel rooms. Uh, the average stay time of a Bible in a hotel room is six years with the potential of being read by 2,400 people. I don't know where they got the statistic. I'm just reporting that. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty promising, and we want people to steal the Bibles out of the hotel rooms. 
It didn't used to be that way, but we want them to steal them because we leave extra Bibles with the managers, and they just re re refill the room with if somebody takes one. Um, it used to be that 90% of the hotels had Bibles in them. That's down now to 48%. I'm thinking if that, because they don't the uh, hotels don't want to to offend people um, with the Word of God. Um, I have another example of why we hand out these little testaments. I don't do PowerPoint, but I want to go around. I want everybody to see this picture of this gentleman named Don Preston. Real, real quick. That's Don Preston, right here. Nice looking guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Don Preston. Everybody see him? Not a bad looking guy. That's Don Preston. Him, you, would th you saw what he looked like, typical Protestant, middle-class family. Well, when he was growing up, his father was a member of the Hells Angels. His mom was a drug dealer. She went to prison three times for dealing drugs. He and his siblings were, went from foster home to foster home. One time they were living in a parked car in a park. And you can imagine, eventually, he lost respect for all authority. And eventually, he started drinking, doing drugs. Age 18, he's in jail. He read his first Gideon Bible in jail, and you know, just for something to do, started rolling the pages to uh, smoke. You know, we've seen that story before as Gideons. And uh, he continued reading that Bible and said he wished everything was was uh, was good, but it wasn't at that point. Uh, and eventually he got out of jail. He received his master's degree in biological science. He started teaching biology to a freshman class, told his class, you, you want to pass the class? Believe what I believe. And he said, I don't want to hear the name Jesus either. That is exactly his quote. And so, um, also, to use his chemistry skills, he started developing his own methamphetamines. And eventually, you can imagine, he was arrested, spent 15 months in, in prison in Arkansas, released, stopped using drugs and uh, alcohol. He was eventually married. And he was very successful, and he had everything money could buy except true happiness, of course. He and his wife divorced, resulted in him, started drinking and doing drugs again, and this was hard on his uh, family members, being his three children. His daughter, Stephanie, started using drugs, and he eventually ended up back in uh, prison, and September of 2014, he found out in prison that his beloved daughter, Stephanie, overdosed and died. He was devastated, fell to his knees into a fetal position, cried out to God, I surrender, do with me what you will. He refers to this uh, as his Psalm 138 moment. And the day I cried out, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. Today, Don's on a staff at a Christian college. He has seven grandkids uh, from his two remaining sons. And I, you saw his picture. That's him today. What a story. Um, that's why it's so important we hand out these little Bibles. And um, 
there's ways you can help us uh, as Gideons. You, of course, you can continually pray for us. Um, uh, for people's eyes to be open when we hand out these Bibles, um, pray for the safety of Gideons traveling overseas to hand out Bibles. A lot of these guys go in unsafe places and hand out Bibles in some of these third world countries and so forth. And uh, I see you have a Gideon card rack back there. Please use these Bibles. Um, uh, they're really easy to use in memory of someone. You just pledge a couple Bibles, they're $5 each. And then uh, you can get the, I, don't, I didn't look at it too close, but uh, I encourage you to use the Bibles, uh, Gideon Bibles. Uh, the gentleman there maybe can help you with that. And uh, uh, also, I pray for new members. If there's uh, any gentleman here, retired or currently working, sergeant or above, uh, businessman, professional man, or anyone with a, a guy with a four-year degree is qualified to be a Gideon. If any of you today are qualified and you feel uh, pulled by God to uh, join the Gideons, we definitely need more Gideons to hand out millions of Bibles worldwide. So I do challenge you guys, uh, you know, if any of you feel uh, called today, uh, just pray for new members, please. I want to finish up with one more testimony. Uh, Sandy Boyd. She, um, oops, page one. Sandy Boyd, we okay on time? Sandy Boyd, she was raised, raised uh, introduced to witchcraft at the age of uh, nine by her grandmother. She did seances and witchcraft with her grandmother and friends. And by age 11, her dad, uh, it introduced her to drugs. She was addicted to those drugs at age uh, 11 and a willing participant of the occult. Uh, she watched her 13-year-old sister rebel. She was put into a psychiatric ward uh, for manic depression. Uh, and, well, we know what that's all about. Uh, she just was rebelling because of what was going on in the house. And at age 17, Sandy uh, ran away from home looking for a better life. Her dad would stalk her and follow her. Eventually, she was married. Uh, that marriage produced a daughter. Then there was a divorce. Uh, she lost the daughter in that divorce. And um, she was still prostituting her body and drugs and just a mess. Uh, she got married a second time, and that marriage produced a daughter. A divorce followed that. Um, a divorce followed that marriage, but she did re, uh, uh, receive custody of her daughter. I think the first marriage was a son. I'm sorry. Uh, one night, as she was laying in her bed, she felt a nudge at the uh, bottom of her bed, and she opened her eyes, and she saw what she said was an eight foot hooded figure that told her it's time. It's time to teach your daughter what your grandmother taught you. And um, so she came to the conclusion the best thing for her to do would be to take her life. She drives out to a remote field. She's holding in her left hand uh, a razor blade sobbing because she wanted her daughter to have a normal life. And she's sobbing, and she's in this car she bought from a drug dealer a few years ago, and her hand goes down between the, the, her driver's seat and the council, and she felt something. Gideon Bible. Gideon Bible. She started reading. She received Christ, signed the page, the back page, um, that right at that very moment, and today she uh, she's married to a godly man who's a pastor in Texas. Her daughter's 31, and she says her daughter's never casted a spell on any anyone. And um, so Sandy stated that if it were not for God using the Gideons International, she would not be here today. 
it's just so important these little Bibles and the 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 lives they change. Um, so I believe, and she still has the old Gideon Bible as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You're good. We're going to take up an offering now and just remember that uh, this offering is for the purchase of scriptures. All the money goes towards purchasing Bibles. So um, I always remind you of that. It doesn't, the Gideons pay their own way to everything. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the Gideons and thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, we just ask you to bless this offering. Lord, just use it to further your word being spread throughout the world. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you ever wondered, you know, I, does, and maybe nobody ever thinks about this, but I was thinking, isn't it interesting that you can get men who believe that passing out a book is worth their time, their money, their efforts, and, you know, the Gideons, they keep handing out the Word of God. They just keep doing it. They've done it for uh, 100, 100, and, I don't know, 20, 30 years, something like that. You know, and they just keep doing it. They just keep doing it. And I believe, as we think about it, you know, it's because they believe the Word of God is alive. Yeah. It's not just a book. Amen. It's alive. And it produces results. It produces results. And if that's true, which I believe it is true, then I think it's important for us to think about how do I see the Word of God? And what does the Word of God mean to me? What does it mean to me? What does it do? You know, if it's alive, what does it do? How does it, how does it produce results? And I want to look at some scriptures this morning that talk about the Word of God. And I'm going to start in Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's God's Word written or spoken. You know, sometimes you hear the Word of God. Somebody can speak the Word of God, but they must speak what the written Word of God says. You can, it's not just what somebody thinks and some words that somebody throws out, but... When somebody speaks the word of God, it has to agree with the written word of God. They can't disagree. But it says his word gives me direction and guidance. Gives me direction and guidance. It says it's a lamp to my feet. You know, when I think about it, I think, okay, lamp to my feet. That's right here. The word of God guides me where I'm at. You know, guides me where I'm at today, this afternoon. For lunch, yeah. where you go, the Word of God is there to guide your steps in the immediate. And it also is a light to our path, the path, the path ahead of us. It's a light for the path that we take. I always think that, you know, the Word of God, I believe it lights a path. It doesn't always mean we take that path. Don't blame God for every path you take. You know, I believe he tries to guide us down paths. I remember Pastor Eric, Eric Brown, he, he shared one time, he said, you know, if you look at what's going on today, think back to the decision you made five years ago. You know, what's happening right now isn't be, usually because of what you did right now, but it's because of decisions you made, the path you chose. You know, what path do you choose? So I believe God wants to guide us today, right where I'm at. And he also wants to guide my future direction. Where am I going? What am I doing? And so the Word of God. And how does that work? I believe it comes when we read it. God can use things in his Word to show us direction, to show us guidance, can show us paths to take. You know, and when you think about paths, one of the greatest paths is the path to salvation. The Bible says the path to destruction is wide. That's a big old wide path. I believe it's wide because it takes all kinds of opinions. 
It takes all kinds of ideas, all kinds of philosophies. It's just big old wide path. Everybody can fit. But the path that leads to salvation, it says it's the narrow path. It's a narrow path because there's only one way. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. I'm the way. I'm the path. And that path is narrow. You know, it's not open to options and opinions. You know, like, well, I think. You know, I don't mean to sound uh, disrespectful, but I don't think God really cares what I think about a lot of things. You know, he cares about my thoughts, and you can argue with me. But, you know, when it comes to what I think, if I want to try to stand up against him and say, well, here's what I think, I don't think God really cares. The Bible says his word is settled forever. It's settled. It's a done deal. And so we use his word to guide us and direct us. And then I believe in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Word of God is profitable for doctrine. It teaches us truth. It teaches us the truth. And it's based upon what God says is truth. Okay, and that's, that's the true doctrine, is the Word of God and what God says. And, you know, I, I think it's not hard to figure out there's all kinds of doctrines out there today, you know. And, you know, I'm not saying they're all wrong. I'm not saying they're all right. There's just a lot of different doctrines about a lot of different things. But I just want you to know that the Word of God is the only one that's true. Amen. It's the one that's true. And so it's good for doctrine. It's good for reproof and correction. Oh, Maybe that's why we don't want to read it very often. I don't, I don't want it telling me what I ought to be doing. I don't want it correcting me. But that's what it does. It corrects us. It, it reminds us, reprimands us, disciplines us. The Bible says if we're children of God, that he disciplines us. Why? Because he loves us. And the word of God, it disciplines us. You know, it tells us. Don't do that. It tells us to do this. And it will correct us when we're not, if we read it. It is an instruction in righteousness. It guides us to live godly. It guides us to live godly. And I want you to, I just want to say that, you know, living godly will solve a lot of issues. Living godly will keep you away from a lot of problems. Living godly will keep you on the right path. And I believe God's word is an instruction in righteousness. Right living. Godly living. Doing the right thing. It equips us to do good. You know, it equips us to do good. I believe as Christians, we should look at the word of God to tell us what to do. Not always to correct us and say, well, I guess I shouldn't do that. If we do the right thing, you won't do the wrong thing. You know, basically, you know, the Bible says if you walk in the spirit, you won't walk in the flesh. You can't do them both at the same time. If you follow the word of God, it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. Keep you a lot of, out of a lot of heartache. A lot of a lot of issues in life. Now, I did not say that if you follow the word of God, you'll never have trouble. <laughs> you, you can have trouble, but it'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. And the trouble that comes from not doing the right thing. The trouble that comes from not living a godly life. You know. And so the word of God is important. That as we read it. It guides us and helps us and shows us. In Hebrews 4.12. says the word of God is living. And it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God. It's living and powerful. See, that's, that's why the Gideons hand it out. See, they hand it out because they believe if they hand that little book out, 
that inside that little book is the word of God that's living and powerful. Yeah. And then when people pick it up, yeah. it's going to make a difference in their life. Amen. Now, they don't say that everyone they hand out is going to do that. You know, when I was a Gideon, one of the things that I, I went, I went to the University of Bowling Green. <clears throat> and I don't know, we handed out, I don't remember, thousands of them. I mean, we stood and we handed them out. We're handing them out to kids, you know. And at that point, I was kind of shocked. Because I was shocked because a lot of them would take a look at it and they'd walk to the nearest trash can and they'd throw it away. I thought, oh my goodness. And it was disheartening <clears throat> because I believed it was alive and it was powerful. And they were just pick it up. Oh, when they realized what it was, they would take it out of courtesy, realize what it was, and they'd throw it away. And I'll bet you, and I don't know this for a fact, I'll bet you there's a testimony somewhere of somebody digging a Bible out of a trash can. I'll, I'll bet, <laughs> he said there is. <clears throat> I would have bet on it. You know, that somehow, even somebody that threw one away, Amen. that somebody come along and happened to pick it up out of a trash can, and it changed their life. Because it's powerful. The Word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And what does it do? It separates my soul from my spirit. It separates me and my thoughts and what I want to do from God's thoughts. It separates. It gets, it gets down to the nitty-gritty. It gets, it gets down to God's ways and my ways. And it says that there's a difference. There's a difference. And it'll separate that. And so we have to renew our mind by reading that word and finding out what it is God's saying. You know, it doesn't do it because you just magically stick it in your pocket and somehow it, you absorb it. But it comes when we read it when we listen to it, when we meditate on it, the Word of God then begins to change. And it can get inside of us and it begins to separate my thoughts from God's thoughts. You know, it renews my mind. It renews my mind. The Bible says we need our mind renewed. We need our mind renewed. We need it cleaned up, redirected, reguided. We need our mind renewed. We need to remind our, have our mind renewed, the Bible says, so we can prove what is the will of God. When we get our mind renewed, then we start to do the will of God. We start to do the will of God. People, that's when people begin to say, why do you do that? Or there's something different. Why, why, why do you act like that? Or, why don't you act like this? Or why don't you act like that? Had an opportunity this week to be in a situation with a lot of worldly people. And it was just, you know, I, don't, you know I, I, I get to be around worldly people, but I don't always get in a setting where they're being themselves. Okay? There's a difference. You know, I'm around worldly people, but when I'm around them, they try to straighten up a little bit and act, you know, they go, oh, well, the preacher. I got one, yeah, I got one. Well, the preacher's here. It's kind of a declaration of the world. Out, hey, the preacher's here. Everybody straighten up. Get your language correct. You know, okay, that's one setting. This setting was I was there, and the world was just being themselves. Didn't matter. They didn't care. Which that's I don't. That's okay. They were just being themselves. But I was like, wow. Yep, I'm different. Yep, I'm I. I I quickly admit it. I'm different. I'm different. This is, this is different. You know, they're being different. I'm different. You know, we're not the same. We're not the same. And that's okay. That's okay. And so we, we begin to prove. Now, I didn't have to stand up and say, well, I want to prove that. You know, no, I don't have to prove nothing. But just when I do what God wants, it proves his word. It proves his word. Psalms 107.20, it says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God's Word, whether it's written or spoken, is a healing Word. God's Word is a healing Word. It's a healing Word. I, I remember when Charlotte, she's with us again today, and I remember when she shared about going through her, 
process of being healed. How she just stood on the Word of God, read the Word of God, listened to the Word of God, meditated on the Word of God. That's what she was doing. She was getting that Word inside of her that says He sent His Word and healed them. You, you get, your, get the Word inside of you. Because I don't know if you've ever been through anything that's pretty serious. You know, there's a lot of Word going on when you're sick and really serious. There's a lot of Word out there. You know, and I, I'm not condemning doctors. I'm not saying anything bad. They're going to tell you to the best of their ability exactly what they think. And that's good. That's good. But that's their word. They're, it's an educated word. And I'm not against that. But I believe as Christians, we need to listen to the word of God. And in the midst of that, we look to the word and let the word bring healing. It's, it's important. You know, the Bible says, whose report do you believe? You know, you always get a report, you know. And whose report do you believe? Now, the doctor may say, wow, you're really sick, and you've got a serious problem. There's nothing wrong with saying, well, yeah, that's true. But I also believe the report from the Lord. Amen. You know, I also believe his word. And we believe the report of the Lord. And so we trust him. We look to him. His word can bring healing. It bring healing to us. In Proverbs 4, starting at verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It says, pay attention to my words. Pay attention. How do we pay attention to the word of God? Well, I say it, and I say it, and I say it. To pay attention, you got to read it. You got to read it. You got to take time to read it. If you don't read it, you're not going to pay attention to it. Now, I'm not, I don't want to show hands, but has anybody ever found it hard to read the Word of God? Hard to find, hard to find time. Thanks, Ashton. <laughs> I find it hard to read the Word of God. Why do you think that is? Why, why, you know, if it's just a book, why is it hard to read? It's because it's the Word of God and somebody doesn't want you to read it. We have an enemy. Right. The enemy doesn't want us to read the Word of God. So that's why it's hard to read the Word of God. It's hard to find time sometimes. you got to fight that. you got to resist that. And you got to take time. Pay attention. It says, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Listen to what God is saying. Read His Word. Why? Because it gives life. It gives life. It brings life. Yeah. And so obviously, Satan doesn't want you reading it. You know, he would rather you just stay kind of believing that you're never going to get better. You, nothing's ever going to change. Nothing's going to happen. You're just doomed. The Word of God is, comes and it gives life and health. It says it gives life and health. And it says, keep it in your heart. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Why is that? Because that's where you need it. You need it in your heart. Here's what happens. You read the Word of God, and you look at it, and you read it in your head. Now, in your head, it's information. I'm not, I'm not opposed to the information in your head. But when it gets in your heart, it's yours. When it gets down in your heart, it's yours. And nobody can take it away. Nobody can take it away. That's why my mom always said, you need to memorize the Bible. You need to memorize. You need to get inside. Someday you may not have a Bible. That was, I remember saying, someday you may not have a Bible. But if you've got it in your heart, it's always there. Yeah. And it's always there. It's yours. When it gets in your heart, it's yours. Yeah. Now, in your head, people can mess with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a difference. 
you know, in your head, somebody can talk you out of it. In your head, you can doubt it. In your head, you can wonder and question. But when it's in your heart, nobody can touch it. Amen. It's yours. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. It's yours. It's in your heart. And that's where it needs to be. It needs to be in our heart. In our heart. My last scripture is from Luke eleven twenty eight. Jesus said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those not just hearing the word of God, but those that hear the word of God and keep it. The Bible also says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. You can hear the word of God. You can hear the word of God. You can hear the word of God. I would venture to say most people hear more, word, hear more of God's word than they ever keep. Now, I'm not saying that's all bad because at least you're hearing a quantity of the word of God. But I believe that it's more importantly not just hearing the word of God. It's what do you keep? What do you keep? That's why people can go to church and hear the word of God forever and never do it. Never, never makes a change. Never, never changes anything. The word of God is meant to change. It's meant to correct. It's meant to show us. It should bring change in our lives. We should say, you know, I never thought about that. You know, maybe I should do, maybe I ought to do that. Maybe I should not do that. Maybe God would want me to do this. Maybe this is what God is saying to me. I often think, you know, well, I think about a lot of things, but, um, you know, people say, wow, pastor, good message. And I appreciate that, you know, it's better than saying, boy, that was a crummy message. So I do appreciate that. Um, but, you know, what really, what really makes my day is when somebody says, you know, that changed my life. So that changed my life. You know, I'm different. Because of the word of God. It's made a difference in my life. We need to be, keep the word of God. Do the word of God. It needs to become such a part of us. That's just who we are. It's just who we are. You know, it's, it's supernaturally natural. It's not natural. You know, what's natural isn't good. You know, the things that come naturally aren't good. You know, sin comes naturally. You know, I've said it many a times, you know, you don't have to teach your kids how to sin. It comes naturally. They, you know, you don't have to teach them to be selfish. They figure that out real quick. I want that. It's mine. Give it to me now. They learn all that quick. Supernaturally comes from the Word of God and changes in our heart. And so we are meant to walk supernaturally. We need to believe God's Word. We need to act on his word daily. We need to confess his word. You know, confession is really important. Confessing the word of God. And sometimes confessing the word, word of God is really hard because you're going to confess something that's not happening. Sometimes you're going to confess what the word of God says as opposed to your circumstances. You're going to confess that this is what I believe God says. This isn't what's happening. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We continue to trust the Word of God. We continue to trust the Word of God. We trust the Word of God for people, for family members. You know, some of you are going through really tough times with family members that are just, well, they're just not where they should be. I'll put it that way mildly. They aren't where they should be. And that's true. But you believe the word of God and what the word of God says. And you confess the word of God. God so loved the world. Yeah. You know, that kind of covers everybody. God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. And so you believe the word of God. You believe the word of God to change the impossible. You know, I say to this mountain, be removed yeah. and cast into the sea. Not because, 
you know, not because I want it or it makes my life easier, because that's what the Word of God says. That's what the Word of God says. And so we trust Him, and we receive it into our lives. You know, it's not going to do you any good on a shelf. It'll do you some good if you read it. It'll do you a whole lot of good if you receive it. You know, there's a whole lot of things that God has that he offers us, but until we receive it, it's not ours. You have to receive it. I have to receive what the Word of God says. I receive what he says. If that's what the Word of God says, I receive that. I receive that in my life. And I thank him. I thank him for his word. You know, you, you, you get a whole different, you get a whole different um, appreciation of the reality of the word of God. And it's available to everyone. I mean, they're telling stories about people, you know, stick your hand down beside your seat of your car, find a Bible. I mean, you know, figure that out. Well, you can't, you know. But that's what God does. And it's available. It's available. For us, it's readily available. For us, it's super available. Probably most of us got three or four Bibles laying around the house. You know, they're readily available. But only what you receive is going to do you any good. It's only what you receive. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we thank you for what you say. And Lord, help us to receive that word in our hearts. Lord, help us to receive whatever you say for us. Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit speaks to us and shows us what we need. So Lord, just open our hearts. Help us to receive all that you have for us. And Lord, help us to walk, to walk according to your word and according to what you say. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.